The discovery in 2010 that early humans and Neanderthals had interbred was a scientific bombshell. The revelation of a genetic legacy that has since been found to play a role in the lives of modern people, influencing circadian rhythms, the functioning of the immune system, and the way some feel pain. However, scientists have found it surprisingly difficult to reconstruct gene flow in the opposite direction. How interbreeding between the two groups may have shaped Neanderthals, one extinct about 40,000 years ago. With the help of new techniques, a new study offers a clearer picture. The analysis, published July 12th in the journal Science, shows that the two groups exchanged DNA at multiple times over the past 250,000 years, shedding light on how Neanderthals disappeared and could rewrite the history of how and when our Homo sapiens ancestors left Africa. To date, most genetic data suggests that modern humans evolved in Africa 250,000 years ago, stayed there for the next 200,000 years, and then decided to disperse out of Africa 50,000 years ago to populate the rest of the world. But genetics is essentially blind to anything that doesn't leave ancestry to current populations. What I find interesting about this work is that it provides genetic information about these dispersals outside Africa that we could not see before. The findings suggest that the history of early humans was complex and that modern humans likely interacted with Neanderthals and other types of archaic humans, including enigmatic Denisovans, much more frequently than was thought since our emergence as a species between 250,000 and 300,000 years ago. Multiple mating episodes. By comparing DNA sequences in databases, scientists can reconstruct relationships between different populations or species. And because genetic changes occur at a steady rate over a generation, geneticists can calculate the time between when two groups exchange DNA. Like the marks of a molecular clock. According to the study, humans left Africa, encountered and interbred with Neanderthals in three waves, one between 200,000 and 250,000 years ago, shortly after the first Homo sapiens fossils appeared in Africa, another 100,000 years ago, and the last one between 50,000 and 60,000 years ago. The most recent episode is widely recognized and was first identified in 2010, when Nobel Prize-winning geneticist Vanda Pabo sequenced the first Neanderthal genome. However, the new research showed that the first two waves differed significantly from the third, a sweeping migration that ultimately led to modern humans residing in every corner of the planet. The scientists found that the percentage of Homo sapiens DNA in the Neanderthal genome could have reached 10% more than 200,000 years ago and decreased over time. On average, it was 2.5% to 3.7%. A similar study published last year had identified genetic traces of an encounter between the two groups about 250,000 years ago, but the contribution of DNA from Homo sapiens to Neanderthals about 100,000 years ago is a novel finding. According to Lawrence Skov, a geneticist and postdoctoral researcher at the University of California, Berkeley, who was not involved in the study. What seems certain is that the history of humans and Neanderthals is much more intertwined than we thought. Genetic detective work. During the first two waves of interbreeding, the Neanderthal population absorbed human genes and the offspring remained within Neanderthal groups, according to the new study. These first mating episodes, the result of the migration out of Africa of small groups of pioneer Homo sapiens that did not become firmly established, hardly left a trace in the gene pool of current human populations, but they did have a great impact on the Neanderthal genome. In the beginning, modern humans were coming out of Africa and Neanderthal populations were large enough to absorb these initial dispersals of humans and their genes into the Neanderthal population. However, when Homo sapiens left Africa about 60,000 years ago in a long-lasting migration around the world, the offspring resulting from encounters between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals grew up in modern human populations, and their genetic signature remained in the human gene pool, influencing our lives today. In the study, the team used machine learning techniques to decode and sequence the genomes of the remains of three Neanderthals, which dated to between 50,000 and 80,000 years ago, and were found in three different places, Vindija, in Croatia, and the Denisova and Shagerskaya caves in the Altai Mountains. The researchers then compared that data with the genomes of 2,000 present-day humans. We developed a framework to determine whether gene flow occurred between humans and Neanderthals, estimate how many modern human sequences there are in Neanderthal genomes, and identify the specific places in the Neanderthal genome that they carry sequences of modern humans. The mystery of the disappearance of the Neanderthals. There are a handful of Homo sapiens fossils that could reflect the species' early, 
less successful journeys from Africa to the Middle East and Europe, according to Chris Stringer, a senior researcher for human evolution at the Natural History Museum in London, who is not involved in the study. These relics include a fossil of Homo sapiens found in the Epitome Cave in southern Greece, dated to 210,000 years ago, and remains found at the Israeli sites of Skull and Kafsa. Fossils found in Israel had primitive features, such as larger eyebrows, flatter skulls, and variable chins. I've interpreted these traits as retained from more primitive non-Neanderthal ancestors, but alternatively they could be signs of Neanderthal gene flow, and perhaps such features should be examined again now in light of this new work. The population dynamics identified in this research could be one of the main reasons why Neanderthals disappeared 40,000 years ago, Icky said. The researcher's analysis suggests that the size of the Neanderthal population at that time was 20% smaller than previously thought. Human populations were larger, and like waves crashing on the beach, they ended up eroding Neanderthals, and it's likely that the Neanderthal gene pool was absorbed into the human population in the last wave of interbreeding. Extinction is complicated, so I wouldn't dare say it's the only explanation. But I think the uptake of Neanderthals by human populations largely explains the demise of Neanderthals. Stringer agreed that the last phase of interbreeding may have contributed to the extinction of Neanderthals. As the Neanderthal population became even smaller and less diverse as Neanderthal DNA was incorporated into the larger human gene pool. I think that's an important point, Stringer said. Accounting for the increase in Neanderthal genetic diversity due to interbreeding with sapiens also significantly reduces the effective size of their population, adding further evidence that late Neanderthals may have already been an endangered species even without competition from expanding population of Homo sapiens.